Hi there, welcome back to the channel and thank you for joining me. So today we're carrying on with our journey down memory lane, reviewing some old kits and reviving a few old memories I'm sure. Uh, and today it's the North American P51D Mustang and this came out in 73-74 uh, I think. I'll tell you, I've actually got an original one here so this might be even earlier. No, it's 73. Uh, sometimes it says 72 on the box with this particular generation. Um, it's in um, one of the lift-off boxes which makes it extra rare and it's got the British Dooley Bird, the, one, of the, one of the British um, squadrons that were equipped with the Mustang which of course gave them a real hard-hitting fighter plane weapon to, to take on the Germans. It's actually August 1945 at RAF Molesworth. Wow, okay. Molesworth, of course, being down in Northamptonshire way. Well, Northamptonshire, Cambridgeshire. Anyway, this is PK-13. It's one of the early, very early ones, as I mentioned. It's in an early generation box with no, no window. It's got a lift-off box. And on the side, we've got the typical marking um, artwork, which shows you what the model will look like when you do not use any paint. Uh, and it says that no painting is necessary. You can just apply the decals. Other side, we've got some adverts for their other products as normal: the Hurricane, Northrop, Corsair, and Nat. Most of which I think we've seen recently. And I think, without further ado, we shall crack into this and see what their take on the Mustang is. So here we go. Okay. Whoops, Daisy. Right. So we've got a nice stand. The uh, ubiquitous and very excellent matchbox stand. If only they made them today like this for kits, I think that would be a good idea so that they can be displayed in the air. We have, oops, we've got this sprue with the canopy on it, which I'm going to have a look at immediately. Just get a little bit of focus. That's excellent, still on its sprue. Yes, that looks really good. No problems there. Superb. Very nice. We've got our Mark I first generation proper purple for the purple range instructions. And within we've got some decals. And then we have a final sprue. Uh, please. Let's have a look what we got then. So, British Government Purchasing Commission asked North American Aviation to build under licence an aircraft for them, uh, the aircraft of another company, but a proposal was made by North American to design a completely new machine. The Mustang, I think that the British wanted them to make Spitfires and they said, why don't we make our own, that you can have two Brits. And that's what's kind of happened. Um, so, basically... Uh, it says here, the first prototype without engine and with borrowed wheels was produced in 117 days and flown just seven weeks later. The early versions entered service with the Royal Air Force as early as July 1942 and were fitted with the Allison engine. Performance, while excellent at low level, was not suitable for, for normal fighter operations and the aircraft were used on ground attack missions only. It doesn't finish the story though, which obviously means that they then removed the Allison engine and made them all with Merlins. And this is definitely a Merlin equipped aircraft that you see in the picture here. So, we've got some decals, including the famous Dooley Bird logo. <laughs> I'm not sure whether that was named after a lady or a bird or just a nickname or what it was, but. Anyway, it's quite evocative, uh, memorable bit of artwork. Then we have, on the other side, typically with these early generation ones, we've got this bit of a boring blurb on the back, we won't dwell on that. Then we've got the hot hints, which are also kind of boring and basic stuff for kids. And then we get into the proper instructions. So, let's have a look. Pilot goes in his seat. And then he gets put between the two halves of the fuselage and he's got the radio equipment obviously behind his head. Then you've got your spinner and propeller. And you're bringing in your prop attaching that assembly to the main fuselage. Bringing on your canopy. And then you move on to the tailplanes which go in. 
your wings then get, to, they're a top and bottom design, they get popped together, they get introduced to the fuselage, then you've got your gear and your intake and your drop tanks and then all those parts get brought on board along with the gear doors and the exhausts and the tailwheel and the tailwheel doors because the, the tailwheel retracts on this aircraft and that's it really it all goes together like so so let's have a look at the sprues um, I'm hoping not for not going to be too much of this raised panel lining that we saw recently on the FW190 but I can tell you that there is one line that is raised and that seems to be all, oddly. So, fuselage. Yep, very nice. Wheels and the spinner. Then the pilot. You've got your drop tanks, pilot seat. You've got your gear and your intake lip for underneath radiator intake and on the other side you've got the other halves of the, the other halves of the drop tanks the gear doors and you've got your other half of the fuselage that is that nicely molded no flash it says matchbox Leslie 1973 on the inside you can make that out there it is very nice and then we have a sprue where all the parts are in blue this is all your tails and wheels and the bits that make it go. <laughs> so we've got, oh, I've got some raised lines again. The gun base, that's a raised panel line which is a bit nasty. That's a bit disappointing. But this is just the early, the early approach that Matchbox took. It's not all raised, it's the rest of its um, uh, recessed panel lines. But it's just these gun bay ports, they've got to raise them. Can you see that? Eee, that's a bit nasty. Yeah. And again here, this line here is also raised. Uh, a bit unfortunate. But a lovely kit still, you know. Um, it was the style of the day. I mean, Airfix were doing raised panel lines as well. So we shouldn't be too critical. They weren't doing anything that other manufacturers were not doing themselves. Um, yeah, I mean it's fine there, but not, not on those gun ports, that's just a bit strange. Uh, you've got your guns here, which looks quite cool. And you've got your nice prop there as well. So, yes, it's very nice, it's a clean sprue, nice plastic. Just a bit disappointing about the raised panel lines. But it's, this kit is not alone, not alone. The very last one that I reviewed was the FW190, that was exactly the same, so yeah, it's just this early generation. Spitfire was a bit like that too, so the Spitfire, the FW, uh, they didn't do it with the um, the Hurricane, that, that wasn't raised, but they seem to have done it on a few of them, I don't know, I don't know why, a bit of a strange choice really. Uh, is that a part or is that just a spare bit? We'll put it back in there anyway. So, there we have it, so that's the Dooley Bird, the P51D. Very nice kit, I think 7.5 out of 10 is quite a lot of race pad lines, which kind of annoyed me. <laughs> but other than that, it's nice, it'll go together perfectly, you won't have any problems at all. Uh, not this one though, because this is a bit of a special one-off. Uh, not a one-off, but there's not many of these left around, not with this boxing. So that is quite a, a bit of a classic, really. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it interesting. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Thanks very much. Uh, we always like a like. Uh, I'd give it 7.5 out of 10. It would have been probably 8 or 9 out of 10 if it had not got the raised panel lines, but there you go. If you enjoyed the video, please would you share it with your friends as well, if you think they're interested. And also, don't forget to click the notification bell, because if you do that, you'll be notified of forthcoming videos in a similar style, which you probably enjoy as well. Uh, and until the next video then, uh, please stay safe and look after yourselves. Thanks for joining me, and bye for now.